And here's a look at the new MGM National Harbor, situated right next to the Potomac River here in Lower Maryland, right across the river from Washington, D.C. You've heard the crowd chanting, Usyk, Usyk, Usyk. Now get ready to listen to them chant, Bozdik, 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 as Alexander Bozdik gets ready to come into the ring for his light heavyweight showdown against Unieski Gonzalez. You can see that Bozdik is two years younger, two and a half inches taller, has a one and a half inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. And they both weighed in within a pound of the 175 pound limit and they both rehydrated up to the same weight tonight. And that's a very normal dehydration. Both guys putting on 10 pounds overnight. Once again, it underlines how unusual it was that Michael Hunter weighed 198 yesterday and came to the ring at 197 and a half. Let's go back up to Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Harbor National Harbor, the action continues. This contest presented by Top Rank Incorporated in association with Joe DeGuardia's All-Star Boxing. Sponsored by Kidder Sports, Takate Born Bowl, and the MGM National Harbor. Sanctioned by the Maryland State Athletic Commission, the three judges assigned to ringside, David Braslow, Lynn Carter, and John Gradowski, and in charge of the action at the bell, referee Harvey Dock. And now, 10 rounds of boxing in the light heavyweight division. On the line, the NABF and vacant NABO light heavyweight championships. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue with gold, official weight, 174.8 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one, consisting of 18 victories, including 14 wins by knockout, only two defeats, originally from Pinar de Rio, Cuba, but now living, training, and fighting out of Miami, Florida, USA. He is Ioneski, the monster, Gonzalez. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with silver, official weight, 174.2 pounds. His record, a perfect one. 12 fights, 12 victories, including 10 wins by knockout from Kharkiv, Ukraine, the undefeated NABF light heavyweight champion, Alexander the Nail Gvozdi. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, guys, they don't have the scorecards. Hang on, hang on, relax. Referee Harvey Doc is now supervising a process by which the ringside judges are trying to come up with scorecards so they can properly mark scores for the fight. As we mentioned, at the beginning of the show, this is the first time that HBO Sports has ever covered boxing matches in Maryland. and We've been doing it since the late 1970s, so it's almost 40 years of boxing on HBO, and we've never been here before. Guys, we received the instructions earlier. Harvey Dock is a veteran New York referee. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, took those once, one and switch. This is considered the most evenly matched fight of the night. Hey, Pat, you want me to start it? And Yurieski Gonzalez, who was unbeaten until a year and a half ago, now has a lot to try to prove as he suffered two losses in a row. The first of them. A decision lost to Jean Pascal in Las Vegas with, with which almost no one other than the judges agree. It just appeared to be one of those simply terrible decisions because almost all other ringside critics believe that Gonzalez had dominated Pascal with his overhand right that he landed all night long. The question here, can he land that overhand right against Bostic, who has a very good long jab? 
not only a very good long jab, Jim, but he had very good foot movement. And I'm seeing if Alexander can go ahead, Gonzalez, excuse me, can go ahead and try to cut him off if he can, which he should early, to try to establish that he's going to be on him every round that goes. So, you know, I like to see him do that now and not wait, because if he wait, then he'll have to play catch up later. Should this be full-scale trench warfare for Unieski Gonzalez? I, I think so. I think he should just come out guns blazing, hitting the pressure, and also trying to, you know, establish, as he just threw a left and a right over the top right, to try to establish that he's, he's here to win. So he must establish this now. The first three rounds is crucial on the dictator of the pace of this fight. You saw Harvey Duck immediately warning Unieski Gonzalez about hitting Vostik on the back of the head, and that may be a factor in the fight. Whether Duck allows Gonzalez to throw his right hand over the top and land it when sometimes it is likely to make contact on the back of the head. Gonzalez can't be distracted by the referee. He must throw the punch as he sees it, because if he don't, then he will take away one of his biggest weapons, I think, Gonzalez must continue to throw that overhand right and every now and then drop it down to the rib cage And then he was at least slow his his guy up to be able to go ahead and get the overhand right over But he must continue to throw what works for him Well, let's put it this way Bernard if he can't throw the overhand right he has come to a gunfight with knives If he can't throw the overhand right then when he will be he'd be running and trying to figure out how to get away from those quick jabs and the quick feet which is important in his fight if he don't want to get you know, bewildered or waiting to look for one big punch. And so Bozdyk has already shown you what he does. Jab and move, jab and move. Bozdyk, from the outside, you see, has the advantage. And Gonzalez wants to get inside, but there's a danger zone coming in because that middle distance, Bozdyk, is also very dangerous. So you got to get through Bozdyk's offense in order to get inside. And Bozdyk's also shown against Mohamedy and others that if you try to negotiate that distance and aren't very careful, he can knock you out. And Vosek has good combinations. He's still a four-punch combination. And you know, Gonzalez can't compete with that. That's not a style. That's not, he, 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 he fires from his position. This is what he does. He throws punches and he throws overhand rights a lot. Right. Gonzalez told us yesterday he needs to brawl, but intelligently brawl. Good little flurry there by Unieska Gonzalez, who got off the four-punch combination. Now Bozdik comes back and lands a solid left hook. Good first round. How was it? There you go. How you feel? Okay. Interesting round. Keep moving. We'll keep that stiff jab, okay? Don't give him that short distance to punch you with those hooks, okay? That's a good round. Again, at the end, you lost your balance, and he just kind of jumped on top of you, but you did very good to hold it. Go back to the jab, back to jab. When he's like this, throw your combinations, okay? Put it together. Very good. Nice round. How's his power? No good? Good. You gotta work it with the jab and move. Jab and move. Don't go brawl, all right? And don't just go for that right hand. Switch it up. Think, think. How are you feeling? Good? All right, Nick, switch it up and change. Uniaska Gonzalez was trained and conditioned for this fight by former Cuban amateur coach Pedro Diaz, whom we've seen with other fighters in the past, but Diaz had another assignment tonight with other fighters elsewhere. So Yorcanes de España is the man who will be the uh, the leader in the corner of Uniaska Gonzalez, and he has not been in that position with Gonzalez before. Does that kind of thing matter, Bernard? It all depends. I mean, because Gonzalez has been in there. He's not new to this. And, you know, he needs to go ahead and throw more than one jab because he's going to get countered if he don't. But, no, I don't think it's going to be a big factor. I think he's been there, done that. He has some fights where he got experience. And I don't think there's going to be anything different. But he can't be one and done here. He got to be more than one. He got to throw four punches. He got to set it up first and be first at all times in this fight. He will not outbox. So he will not outbox. You know, Gonzalez missed with a whistling right hand right around in this area of the ring in the first round, guys. And Carpensi knocked um, Wozniak down with a kind of shot from a middle distance that Wozniak didn't see. That was the kind of shot Gonzalez came pretty close to landing that, that could do real damage in that first round. But Karpinski 
knocked Bostic down with a hook from the southpaw stance. He was a southpaw who knocked Bostic down with the right hand. Yep. And that's a harder punch to see. No and question. the kinds of punches that uh, Unieski Gonzalez Bo throws, a lot of them from long distance. Bozek, when he spins out of that left, he's up tall. Yep. And he's always vulnerable to get hit with that. With the right hand, Overhead which is why right, Gonzalez came close to goes, landing. He goes right to the right hand because he goes to his left. And anybody that throws it, especially Gonzalez, throw it the way he throws that right hand, he's going to catch him. So the overhand right especially um, useful against a taller opponent. Posey got in an excellent quick uppercut uh, to sew up combination a few bit, well, about 20 seconds ago face-to-face -face with Gonzalez and already he's shown that his hand skills and hand speed could give Gonzalez a lot of trouble as the fight goes on. That's why Gonzalez has to beat the body. He has to go to the body, invest in the body to take those legs out because he cannot win a boxing match. As we see, cannot win a boxing match here. Terrific right hand there, set up in combination by Vozdek. His hands are accelerating here in round two as he's gotten a look at the way Unieski Gonzalez fights. Especially if Gonzalez continues to stay out three feet away from Vosek. He has to get closer, he has to take that reach away, and he has to bang the body when he's punching. You do get the impression that if, if Vosek is out there where Unieski can't breathe on him, Gonzalez is at his mercy because the hand speed difference. Vosek throws straighter and shorter shots. That's where they land more accurately and with more force. Well, Gonzalez got more power in his shots, I believe. Great first couple of rounds by Vozdik. Still to come, Vasily Lomachenko, that man right there, sitting in his dressing room and watching on the TV as his stablemate and training mech. Uh, Vozdik goes after this victory against Gonzalez. And the opponent, Jason Sosa. A tough street kid from Camden, New Jersey, who took up boxing at age 21 because he was tired of the heat in the pizza kitchen. He was cooking pizzas 12 to 14 hours a day, and he thought almost anything would be better than this and went to the gym to become a boxer. And in only eight years, has gotten to this point. He couldn't stand the heat, so he got out of the kitchen. That's exactly but, right. but into an even hotter one tonight, maybe. Second up. Second up. Jabs through round three, or through round two, I should say, going into round three. Vozdik has landed 32 jabs out of 110 thrown. Gonzalez, eight out of 50. Gonzalez needs to close the gap quickly, not stand out to get hit with three or four punch combinations. If he continues to do this, then it would be a boxing lesson he will receive. And in this 10-round fight, we go to Harold Letterman here in the third round for his unofficial score. Harold? Okay, Jim, I got a 20 to 18, two rounds to nothing, Alexander goes to... You know, Jim, he, he's boxing a beautiful fight. I got to tell you, left jabs, right hands, combinations. He changes direction, moves both ways, not getting hit, and he's what? just out boxing Gonzalez in his fight. Two to nothing, Alexander goes the While Harold was speaking, Gonzalez got in a left hook to the body that might have been his best punch so far. We, we talk about fighters with chins, and I'll mention from time to time, the fighters with the good chins are the ones who don't get hit on the chin. And Bernard brought up, Wozniak comes out, sometimes standing straight up, and is susceptible to right hands. And he is. It, but, but right now, he don't pay the price because Gonzalez is not throwing punches. Because down goes himself. Gonzalez, and that's a knockdown for Wozniak. And Gonzalez nods his head. Veteran of the Cuban amateur program, been in boxing all his life. He knew. That's the danger for Gonzalez. To get inside, you have to go through that middle distance where Vozek is very effective. And Vozek is sharper, quicker, and his punch is coming really, oh. really sharp. This is it, folks. This is a potential signature performance for Alexander Vozek who's having it all his way against Unieska Gonzalez. Some people thought that Gonzalez would be too strong and too big a hitter for Bozdik. Right now, Bozdik is wiping the canvas with him. That was not a knockdown. Gonzalez has no legs, he's cut, his nose bleeding, and you know, it's just time, matter of time over. right now. Fight's over, guys. Well, he gotta let his hands go more, Max. Because right. if you let his hands go more, Gonzalez is gonna grab him and hold him, but he has to right now let his hands go it's good. Lordy let him go fast from top to bottom. If, if Gonzalez gets out of this round, it's a miracle. He is a determined, self-confident fighter, but he has been swamped by Bozdik's hand speed. And his accuracy and the shortness and straightness of 
Volzik shots. Look, left hand, the left hand were in this fight. Yeah, the, the, the left hand were in this fight. I don't know why you the fight's still going on. He has no coordination, no balance. But he has heart. Yeah, he has heart. Right, right. But it's it's early in the fight, and he's taking a savage beating this round. I don't know why it needs to end with him unconscious. Right. Uh, I think Harvey Doc ought to think about stopping this. He's already so far behind on the scorecards. It's hard to imagine him coming back. Guys, this guy guys. hit, this fight is over. Yeah. It's enough. And the corner is stepping up onto the apron and saying to Harvey Doc, we don't need any more of this. We can see the outcome. And what a tremendous performance by Vostick. And it, yes, it was. And it reminded me a lot of the Mohammedi performance. If you're a fighter who's trying to get inside on Vostick, boy, you better be careful how you go about doing that. Because you have to go through a whole lot of to get in there. A lot if of you're not going to get inside, how can you beat him with all that speed and maneuverability from the outside? Right, you got to get in. You just got to figure out how to do it. You have to figure it out, and you have to have a lot of a lot of heart and a lot of skill to get in there. Because if you just walk in there, you'll see what happened to Gonzalez. I'm not surprised that Vostick won. I'm shocked at the, the way, way he won. won. Exactly. I'm shocked, too, because I knew this fight was going to be tough, but I didn't know it was going to be that one-sided. Alexander Vostick got a TKO over Isaac Chalemba in his last performance on the undercard of the first Ward Kovalev fight. Chalemba's not an easy guy to put away, but he was able to do it. Now he has another feather in his cap. He has another fe big feather in his cap because Gonzalez is not a one an easy guy to knock out. But let's take a look at the first knockdown coming up as Unioski Gonzalez tries to figure out what hit him. It comes from the jab. It comes from the jab. The jab set it all up and then the combinations after the jab and after he realized he had Gonzalez hurt, he finished him. And that's what most young fighters or fighters at a stage where they're ready to take the big step finish to do. But he done it and he continued to keep throwing punches to end the fight. Gonzalez was so tough, he hung in there as long as I, I, mean, I was shocked he lasted that long to hang in there. But eventually he was going to get hit with one of those punches that was coming. The right hand off the jab. The jab really didn't land, but the right hand. Because Gonzalez is now is, is, is hanging in the wind. He's not reacting. He's fighting off the of instincts right now. And that's when you get either real hurt or knocked out. So this is an opportunity now for people to take a look at what they see in front of them right now, which is a, which is a big fight coming. You saw in that previous picture that Vosik had blood on the back of his head as he was going after Gonzalez. That blood had to have come from Gonzalez's nose and mouth. Yeah, because both didn't get hit. He didn't get hit any time. So that was the blood coming from Gonzalez's mouth that eventually got on the back of his head and all over the place. All right. And that brings Vosik's uh, uh, record to... Uh, 13 and 0 and standing in front of me now Michael Buffer with the official particulars on the TKO Ladies and gentlemen here at the National Harbor the MGM National Harbor This contest comes to an end as referee Harvey Dock calls a halt to the bout the official time 2 minutes 55 seconds round number three the winner still undefeated from Kharkiv, Ukraine. And now the unified NABF and NABO light heavyweight champion, Alexander the Nail Gvozdi. Great smile. The Nail really nailed Gonzalez in this fight. In the third round, Vostik landed 50 of 66 power shots. One of the most impressive rounds we have recently seen. Let's take a look at the overall copy box numbers as Bozdik lands 90 more punches than does Gonzalez. 116 out of 256, 45%. Found to be way over 40 or way over 50% in power punches. There you have it. 68%. No way he wasn't going to get a knockout. Landing that kind of leather at that rate. 72 out of 106. I mean, you you can go hit the heavy bag, and exactly. you might not be that accurate. And the heavy bag might hit you back because <laughs> that loads.
That's unbelievable. It's not going to get you there. And 44 out of 150 jabs, 29%. That's another extraordinarily high percentage. That was an amazing display of ring skill by Alexander Bostic. And accuracy and, and poise for the, the fights that he had on his resume is, is, is really, really uh, a fresh breath here in this weight division to see that. Max Kellerman stands by in the ring with Alexander Bostic. Congratulations, Alexander. A sensational performance. Gonzalez had two losses coming in, but one of them was a robbery. He beat Pascal and got robbed. And the other one was a majority decision loss to Shabransky, a tough, close fight. This turned out to be a mismatch. How did you do it? Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> you know, my plan was to wait a little bit and start to be more active in the late rounds, but I saw this change. I catch him and I didn't let him all let, let, let him go. So this just happened. Happy. You seem to be at your best when your opponent is coming toward you, enabling you to get off your offense when they're on their way in. Why is that? I don't know. You know, like uh, I did a lot of work before this fight, and I was ready for pressure, and I was ready or moving or stay in front of him. So I just. When I felt that I am in danger, I was moving around him. When I started feeling that I can't stop him, I just stood uh, in front of him. Because we've seen boxers who can box well from a distance, yeah. but when the opponent is coming toward them, they're not throwing those punches with what Mike Tyson would call bad intentions. Yes. You're throwing your shots with bad intentions. Was the point here to get the knockout win? Yeah, it starts start feeling the smell of blood, so. I just, just, just did my job. We've seen you on the deck from a right hand, though it was against the southpaw, and he seemed to want to catch you with his right hand through some whistling overhand rights. One in particular seemed to just miss you in the first round. What was your thought about taking away his right hand? You know, uh, I got a good lesson when I was fighting with uh, Carpense, so I was working on it. I also watched a lot of Unieski's fights, and I saw that he's a very best weapon at uh, his wild right hand, so uh, I, did, I was working on it, about, on this mistake. On the same card with your stablemate, Usyk, and also, of course, Lomachenko, the odds of having the most impressive performance of the night are not very high, and yet you may have just done it. Let's see what Lomachenko looks like. What are your thoughts about that? <sighs> I'm very, very honored to fight with all my friends and all these guys in the same card. I'm very happy. It reminds me of our past, past times. So I'm, I want to say congratulations to my friend Alex with uh, impression victory. And uh, I hope, I, I want to wish luck for my another friend, Vasil Lamachenko. I hope it's going to be a fight without surprise. So I wish him fight. I, I wish him luck and win this fight. Alexander. You're a light heavyweight. The top of the division, of course, is Kovalev and Ward, or Ward and Kovalev. We'll see after the rematch. Very close first fight. What is your plan in the immediate future? Do you think you're ready right now, after that performance, to challenge the very top of the 175-pound division? Yeah, I feel that I'm ready, and I'm just uh, waiting for opportunity when I get the chance to fight for the title. That doesn't matter against who. I wish Sergey Kovalev luck in his future fight. I hope he's gonna finish what he didn't finish in the last fight. So I'd not prefer to fight against Kovalev, but it's, it's gonna be necessary, I will. You finished that fight so unexpectedly early. Let's see if Lomachenko's ready to go. Thank you, Alexander. Tremendous performance. Jim. And you're sitting at home thinking, that guy speaks better English than the other Eastern Europeans I'm watching. Well, he chooses to live with his family in Oxnard, California. He does not go home to Ukraine between fights, as do both Usyk and Lomachenko. And that may stand him in good stead in a variety of different ways. Now, let's take another look at the end of the fight. And here is... Usyk really torturing Lomachenko as Lomachenko, or excuse me, Gonzalez, as Gonzalez had completely lost his balance. And now you see the corner 
coming up onto the edge of the apron to let referee Harvey Doc know that they didn't need to see their fighter go any further against the red hot Alexander Bostick. So two fights in the books with our main